Yes, I like cleaning that much. Hello and welcome back to our renovation project here in Portugal. Now that we have physically and metaphorically cleaned up the mess that was the previous project, we're now ready to move on to something new, which is quite exciting because the last couple of weeks have been quite challenging. And I'm actually looking forward to this one because it's the kind of stuff that I typically enjoy more. It's almost in the painting and decorating realm, but it is a little bit different and it is something that we've not done before. But I'm hoping that it's not gonna be too complicated and I'm hoping that a little ha hasn't just shown up here. The plan for the next couple of days is to be lime washing this room so that we can surface mount all the electrics and the plumbing so that we can have the heat pump installed in about, I think it's about seven or eight days now. We've done some preparation. We've given the place a really good clean because there was tons of mess that fell down from when we did the floor project above. We've sealed between the two floors as well so that hopefully no more dust gets in, although probably some will. And we've given all the walls a good brush down. So now we need to mix up some lime wash. Hi. Hi. You're looking in my barrel. <laughs> this has been sitting for a very long time. Yes, we're effectively giving the payoff of a story that started about two years ago when we slaked some lime in a, I think, a much tidier carport. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we've left it to mature for, well, until now. So apparently for lime wash and for some kinds of plastering, matured lime putty is the way to go. And so we slaked this ages ago and it's just been sitting in a barrel. But we're now gonna see if we can turn it into some lime wash, which I think is as simple as taking some of the putty, mixing it with some water and trying to get a consistency of something like single cream. Should we, should we have a look in, in the barrel? Yes. So just a small layer of water on top, but then some nice... Oh, that's, that's stupid, isn't it? So today, we also have the stress of integrating a rescue chicken into our chicken flock. Not enough that we have nine rescue kittens, now seven, because two have gone to new homes. We now also have a rescue chicken, because her flock was decimated, and her being by herself somewhere is not cool. So oh, I thought what you were going to say is because you just can't say no. <laughs> well, that is also true. <laughs> I mean, I offered. It wasn't even that I had to say yes or no. I offered. Because a chicken shouldn't be by herself after she's just seen all her friends. Massacred. Yeah. It's not terrible. Cool. Really terrible. So she's coming to live with us. And our three are still not convinced. They will get used. They will. Yeah, this is looking good. Look at that. Yeah, let's get back on topic. So cottage cheese, they say, should be the consistency of this. I would agree that you've achieved that. All right, let's get scooping. That's like cream cheese, I would say. It's very sloppy. We've never done this before. We're not professionals or experts or anything. We have read about it and watched lots of videos. So, you know, just bear that in mind. Yes, usual disclaimer. This is not a how-to video. It's a what happened video. And we don't know what happened yet. So let's find out. <laughs> <laughs> our first attempt let's say <laughs> okay definitely a good day for indoor projects this is very difficult because I really can't see anything <laughs> Maybe that's why I have to do like six coats. Yeah, maybe. 
I was also hoping that it was going to hide some of my trail marks and imperfections, but so far I'm not seeing that happen. I'm trying to put it on quite thin, but it's also not so easy. Maybe I don't need to do anything, I can just stand here and watch you. That is usually my game. <laughs> yeah, I know that you don't want to overwork it, but I don't know where I've gone and where I haven't. <laughs> Yeah, it's just to practice and learn. Yeah. I don't know who plastered this wall, but they did a <laughs> terrible job. <laughs> and it feels to me like you're putting on way too thin, but... It's yeah. supposed to be quite thin though, based on what I've read. Yeah. Yeah, when you watch some videos, could you tell from theirs what that they'd... Yeah, but they were painting with colours, because uh, otherwise you wouldn't be able to see anything. Yeah, well that's... I mean, the good news is no one will be able to leave a comment and say we did it wrong, because they can't see either. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it just comes down to how thin is thin, you know? Yeah, right. I mean, I'm thin. <laughs> <laughs> Some might disagree that that's not what thin means. Put it on thinly. Okay, I'm going to have to hire someone. <laughs> Since you're still watching, I can only imagine that this is more interesting than watching paint dry. <laughs> but I don't know how much more interesting. So um, I'm going to see if I can get the rest of this wall done and then we'll do some more and maybe share some final thoughts later on. No idea. I've gone for a slightly different approach, I know this is not what the book says to do, but I haven't sprayed down this wall. I can definitely see a little bit better where I've been and where I haven't, but, you know, jury's out as to whether the finish will be as good. We'll see. I don't know if mine is any good yet. <laughs> and <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> because we have, we've never even seen a lime washed wall before, so we won't even know if we've done a good job or whether it's just that we don't like the finish. Well, that is the first coat complete. I think we used maybe about half of the uh, lime wash that we mixed up which was four yogurt tubs worth and a bit of water, probably about half the amount of water as uh, putty. It's kind of weird stuff and the jury is still out on whether or not we're gonna like the finish and whether or not we got decent coverage. But the good news is we've got lots of opportunity to practice because we need to do like four to six coats on every wall. But that I think is enough for now and we'll see if we can work out a way to make this video more interesting for the remainder of it because otherwise it's just gonna be the same thing like four to six more times. I don't think that's gonna be very interesting to watch, but I guess we'll see. Maybe we'll say something interesting or funny later on. There's quite a few imperfections and I just wanted to test I've seen decorators use it before the first coat of paint and then in between each coat and we've got quite a few patches where it's a little bit rough. And do you um, think that's my plastering skills or our lime washing skills? No, there was definitely some imperfections before but then I think some more get introduced from the painting as well so I think next time I'll definitely do more of a preparation job before the first coat so that then subsequently you're just patching the, or fixing the paint. So like, you're not gonna see this on camera. These tiny little marks. It's just a little bit rough, I think, from the line finish. And then that, and it's gone it's perfect then. So, I mean, this wall doesn't have too many blemishes. But this wall does. So the first two particularly. Yeah, let's not even talk about the first we're one. We're not worried about that one because we're going to have units pretty much in front of all of that. This is going to have some exposable 
And this will have quite some exposure. This will have a little bit. So just going to go around and get the worst of it. And then maybe in a couple of coats time, I can see if there's anything still standing out. It doesn't have to be perfect in this room because it's a laundry slash plant room, utility, whatever. Um, but I just want to try it to see what it does so that for next time, the next room, um, we can spend more time on the preparation rather than the painting. So I don't know if you read in the, the lime book about why they used to do lime wash over the top of lime plaster, but it was quite interesting. So, in the lime groups that I'm in, yeah. they talk about, they talk about it being a cheap alternative to paint. Well, I guess it is, yeah. But also from a humidity control and mold prevention, I guess. Yeah. And I believe those are all true things. But I think the thing that I was reading was about the a bit like the history of it. And oh, like there's a historic reason? Yeah, well, I guess the, the original purpose behind it, you know, before modern understanding of things like mould and humidity, yeah, was yeah, yeah. the plaster is quite slow, quite expensive and quite time consuming to apply. And in theory, it's a skilled job that only some people had the knowledge of. You're calling yourself skilled? Not at all. <laughs> Couldn't be further from the truth. But the idea with the lime wash is that it's quite easy to mix and quite easy to apply. And so it was put on as like a protection for the plaster to allow the plaster to survive longer. Oh, so I guess kind of like what we do with timber, right? We treat it and put stuff on it to prolong the life. Yeah, exactly. And so that's why it's this idea of needing to apply it not just once and walk away. Mm -hmm but after a few years to ref like refresh that. Um, Does that apply to inside as well? Is it I have no idea. <laughs> I am pulling this from my memory somewhere. <laughs> but I'm sure we could look it up. Yeah, because I don't want to be doing this every two years. Just saying. I don't really want to be doing this every two years either. So I don't know if you're able to see at all what the uh, finish looks like in here, but it's not amazing, but it is good enough for now. We've done three coats. We sanded in between each coat just to take out some of the imperfections, but I think we've introduced some imperfections as well as having covered some imperfections that were already there. And that's why we're a bit kind of undecided about this lime washing technique. Of course, it's probably our technique more than the actual process of applying lime wash that is uh, at fault here. But yeah, it's okay, but it's not life-changing. But we have learned a few things about the process. Uh, obviously, one of the things that we've learned is we need more practice, both at the plastering stage and at the lime washing stage. Um, but we've got lots more walls to practice on, so that's all good. So the biggest challenge, I think, is Number one, we've never seen a lime plastered wall before. And number two, we've never seen a lime washed wall before. So we didn't really know what to expect. We didn't know what the finish should be. So then when you get to a finish, you're like, is that how it's meant to be? Or have we just not done a very good job? <laughs> so a couple of things for sure next time that we will try, and we're going to do the small downstairs toilet next. Um, is after all the lime plastering is done and hopefully we can get a different finish and maybe Guy can talk about that but is to go and smooth out any of the imperfections that we don't want there before we start the lime washing 
That's one thing. The other thing is we think that perhaps on a couple of the coats we went too thick. This here and this here. They look like it's like got air bubbles underneath of it, but it doesn't. Yeah, I think what this issue is that we were just trying to point out is where the lime wash has gone on too thick and then it's kind of sucked into the wall and kind of stayed there. Then subsequent coats over the top, you're kind of just like layering over that kind of thick area. And so it's not very smooth and consistent. And so that I think is definitely a mistake in our technique. The first mix that we did, which we showed you, was that kind of single cream consistency. The second one that we did, which we didn't show because we were just getting on with it, was much, much thicker and was definitely way too thick. The plan was to try and make it a bit thicker so that we could kind of fill in some of the little low spots, but it was a mistake to do that. So we're definitely gonna stick with a thinner wash in future and then just try and build it up with more coats. And I just want to go back to why, I mean, it might seem funny that we're kind of painting a room when, you know, the rest of the house doesn't even have plaster. And the reason was, is we wanted to experiment with the top coats and the, the lime washing before we go and do the rest so that we could take these learnings into it. Because now we know a little bit more about how we want the finish of the walls to be for the plastering. So it would have been silly to plaster the whole house, do the lime washing and then be like, ah, oh, we shouldn't have plastered the whole house like that. We should have done X, Y, Z. So that's one reason. The other reason is the heat pump's gonna be in here soon. And the solar gear is also coming in here. And so we wanted the walls done so that once they're in, we don't have to try and do the base coat. So we're just really considering this like the base coat and then we'll come back and do the top coats once all the gear is in and once all the units are in, etc., etc. And it means that anything behind the heat pump, for example, we don't need to worry about it. We'll just leave it because it's a heat pump and it's a plant room and blah, blah, blah. I did want to get Guy to talk to you about the finish of the plastering that mm. we've learned now that we have lime washed. Yes, when we did the plastering in here, which is the first time we've ever done three coat lime plaster, uh, or any plastering actually, the way that we finished it, we did two top coats, quite thin, and then I used a sponge float to kind of get rid of as many of the imperfections as I could see at the time. And then I used a steel trowel to float or kind of polish the surface. And when I was doing that, I was very excited because it was looking really nice and smooth and it was bringing that little bit of lime to the surface and making it really kind of, you know, nice to touch. But I didn't do it perfectly. So there were some imperfections. And I think it was a mistake to do that because we were gonna lime wash. Because the areas like under the, where the sink is gonna go, where I didn't bother to, to trowel it off so much, had a slightly more textured finish and the lime wash has stuck to that a lot better. I think in the future rooms, we're not going to use the steel trowel as the final finishing of the plaster. We're gonna leave it a little bit rougher and that will give it that kind of nice, rustic farmhouse textured finish. And I think it's gonna help with some of those inconsistencies because you won't see them as much. So I don't know if you can see, but this area is a bit rougher and maybe the sound will come through. But up here, I troweled this area here it's slightly different. I don't know if that comes across or not, but <laughs> there you go. So the lime washing project is done. As I said, we'll come back and do the finish later. But now we've got to crack on with the heat pump stuff. So we've got plumbing to do, we've got electrics to do, and we've got a tile or floor. And we don't have a lot of time. So we're going to get on and do that real quick. Yeah, those three projects, which are quite significant to actually bring water into the property, have power in the property and have an actual finished floor to install some of that stuff onto. That's like three big projects and we've got about four days to do it. So we might have to delay the heat pump by a week. Um, but that's what we're going to be moving on to next. Uh, but that's it for now. We will see you in the next one. Bye for now. Bye bye.